Welcome to the Achieve Success Podcast. I'm your host, Nathaniel F. Holmes. Each week, I feature ordinary people who have accomplished great things. Tune in to get inspired and receive tips that will help you reach your goals in business and life as you strive to become the best version of yourself and achieve success. Of it. So just me going through the process of having a, an idea for a business, then taking action, forming the business entity, and then growing the business, the amount of empowerment in my life that I have felt from that, now I feel like really and truly I can do anything. I feel like if I have my mindset to do this or that, I can do it because the information is out there and I have the ability to take action and execute it. Um, and that's what achieve success is really about. You know, it's, it's, it's a hashtag. It's a command is it's a, um, it's a, it's a thought. It's, um, it's all of that, you know, it's achieve success, like do it. Um, so I wanted to write the book to show all the things that I've done and how it's helped me grow personally in hopes of inspiring other people. Yeah. Um, and I use the word inspire because I don't want to motivate people because in my opinion, motivation is temporary. Motivation lasts for a moment. You got to get motivated every day. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I want to do more. Right. I want to do more than motivate people. I want to inspire people. When you inspire somebody, they will run through a wall. When you inspire somebody, they can achieve things that they never thought that they could achieve. And it's Mm -hmm. to me, it's different than motivation. So the purpose of the book is to inspire people to achieve success because it'll help you live a more full life. Um, and, and, and you, you kind of know exactly what I'm talking about because, you know, you, you've worked to build what you have as well. Um, Mm -hmm. so you understand the empowerment that comes with, I, you know, the time freedom, the, the mental freedom. So you understand that. So instead of waiting to write a book, because I want it to be a good book, um, not something I just do, you know, within a week or two weeks, I want it to be a, a good substantial book. I decided that it would be just as powerful, if not more powerful, if I reached out to people that I feel embody the essence of achieved success, Mm -hmm. right? So by me having these interviews, and that's why I invited you on, because, you know, that first conversation, I mean, we played a couple of games together prior to when we actually sat down that day at the gym and actually Mm -hmm. had a conversation, right? So it's one thing when you compete against somebody, but we sat there and we had a conversation And when I tell you, when we were sitting and talking, like I was getting chill bumps talking to you because the things you were saying, I could absolutely resonate with. And I was like, he, you know, like he gets it. He understands. And by the way, you you were speaking, like you live it, you're passionate about it. So when the idea came from the podcast, it was probably maybe a month or two later after we had that conversation, you were definitely someone that popped in my mind. Like I definitely have to have him on. Because from what you told me in terms of what you've been able to do in, in your life professionally, I was like, you absolutely embody the essence of achieved success. And that's the reason why I reached out to you. And I appreciate that, bro. Uh, man, I am. Yeah, man, uh, man, that conversation was good, though, man. That was, uh, I mean, that was a very uh, healthy conversation, man, as, as far as it's just, you know, man, I'm big on uh, mentality, man. That's the, that's the you know. That's the driver of it. I mean, that's the driver of it all, man. I'm 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 big on mentality, man. And and um, you got the same mentality I, I do. The information is there. There is no excuses. Just execute it, man. Like yeah. fail your way forward. Like just go and learn as you go. But the biggest thing is just move forward, execute. Like you like, like you know what I mean, man. That, that's the biggest thing, man. But yeah, but yeah man. That's yeah, I man. That was a good conversation, though. Yeah. So tell tell us um, for for our listeners and, and our followers. So tell us where you're from. Tell us about your childhood, your your beginnings. Childhood, man. Uh, I am. <clears throat> I'm from uh, Lenore, man. A small town, uh, North Carolina, Caldwell County, Dula Town, as uh, s- s- some of my guys would know. You know, some family yeah. members to run around with back in the day. Uh, that, that's where I'm from, man. Um, uh, I had both parents in my life, uh, mom and dad. Dad was a big influence, uh, huge influence on me. Um, 
he just, you know, man, he taught me uh, through his mistakes and his and his success as, you know, life and, you know, a few principles that I that I hold on personally as far as moving forward that, that helps me weed out things. But, yeah, mom's from Hawaii. Uh, they met in the Air Force and uh, they uh, moved uh, move back home this way. And I grew up in a small town, man, small country town. Gotcha. So um, did you go to college? Yep, I went to, uh, I ended up graduating from Bavar College, man. I got my uh, a bachelor's in uh, business, uh, integrated study business. And uh, let me see, but I, I did, I had a little journey there. I went junior college uh, first through basketball, Wilkes Community College, and then I transferred to uh, Wallace State College in uh, Alabama. And some uh, good times down there with some uh, big time athletes down there, man. Them, them guys was a, a good time to play with. Gotcha. So, um, when when you went to school, did you did you go on, on scholarship? Did you go on basketball scholarship? Is that is that kind of how you got through school? Yeah, that was uh, that was really man. To be, to be honest with you, that that's the only reason I went, man. That that is really the only reason I went uh, to school because I love ball, man. I, I ended up going back to school. I was a freshman at twenty one, man. I uh, so I, when by the time I went back to college, I was a little, you know. Uh, a little more mature at that time, like, you know, ready to focus on ball. So, you know, as I stay focused, I had to stay eligible to play. So right. the basketball made me disciplined to um, just to go to school, you know what I'm saying, go to class, net network, you know, learn, you know, man, and just, you know, uh, pass my way through. But, yeah, gotcha. the basketball was the uh, the main focus, though. So, um, so did you, did you, you said you went, you, you started freshman at 21. So what did you do in between the time you – you left high school, and when you decided to to go ahead and go back to school, what were you doing you. in that time frame? I got you, man. So uh, I graduated a prep school. Uh, I was 19 years old when I graduated from high school because uh, I repeated a grade uh, in uh, high school uh, prep reasons. But to, to be honest with you, man, you know, shoot, man, I had a I had a second grade reading level in high school, man. So mm -hmm. so I, I I had to repeat a grade. Uh, so uh, when I graduated at 19, from 20, uh, from that 19 to 21, man, I I, I worked. I, I worked and I took a few classes. I worked at a, a it was in a factory, man. I was on com, uh, commission only, unloading trucks. Uh, man, I, I tried my best to get fired, man. It it, it, <laughs> it, took, it took me about six months, six six or seven months to get fired, man. I tried my best, but yeah. Yeah, man, that's when I figured out uh, uh, physical labor wasn't for me. Uh, nah, it wasn't for me. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So what was the driving force to, to sort of help you refocus? Because it sounds like, you know, you, you went, you were in high school, you went to school, and then for a little bit you kind of worked. What was it that, that clicked for, for you to say, you know what? I need to do something different than what I'm doing now. What, what was it that, that that helped you sort of flip the switch and say, all right, I need to get serious and and this is what I'm gonna do. Uh lifestyle, man. I just wanted uh I wanted something different. Uh my father, you know, he uh he showed me uh different sides of the world a little bit. Uh growing up put me in AAU. So the the biggest thing is is what really got me focused is uh basically what I was doing, uh the the, the route I was going as far as uh you know, just not focused, man. I wasn't, um, I wasn't going in the right direction, man. So I really had to refocus. But, but the biggest thing is just, you know, my freedom. My, my, my freedom was the biggest thing, man. Because you know, even when I went to school, um, like when I went to college, it was in the morning. I worked out, right. and then I went to classes, and then I had my freedom all day long. So when I worked, I could not stand nobody telling me what to do with my time, man. And right. and that was something I developed before I even got into this work work world. Like I was just always, I wanted to be independent of my time. Like, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, I always had it. So, so through me getting focused through business and basketball, creating that discipline, yeah. uh, gradually started uh, helping me understand how to uh, map out my time so I can have that freedom, if that yeah. makes sense. So, yeah, no. So it sounds like, you know, for, for you, the thing is, was like, hey, you know what? I don't want anybody telling me when I need to come to work, how long mm -hmm. I need to work, when I need to take my lunch, what time I get to go home. And mm -hmm. it seems like you had the idea that basketball was going to be the way for you to ultimately have that freedom that you were looking for. 
Yeah. So you knew you had to focus. Like what you were doing, that wasn't going to get you playing ball to then give you the freedom that you wanted, right? Yeah. So you yeah. like you like look this 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 warehouse is not going to get it. I got to mm-hmm. get serious. I got to get right. So then you went back to school and because you had now experienced <laughs> the the, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 lovely uh, experience of working in you know in, in the warehouse, you were like this is not for the kid. So nah, I need to get right. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and, you know, we, we find that all across the board when you're talking about success and you look at people who have been successful is that there's a driving factor, right? There's something that they, that they desire, a, a, a big desire, that that is the reason why they do the things that they do. Because mm-hmm. that's, you know, when I talked earlier about motivation and inspiration, you know, that's more than motivation right there. Because yeah. if, if it's just motivation, guess what? You, right, exactly. But yeah. but you were inspired to have time freedom at some point in your life, and you mm-hmm. saw the the path to do that was through the court, and you mm-hmm. had to get right to go ahead and do that. Yep, you know? yep, for so, sure. So tell us. So you you went to JUCO, um, and then you went to uh, D two or D three. What, what was it? D one. D2. I, I end up, uh, I actually committed to a D1 school, University of California, Riverside. They sent me to the second JUCO. I tore my ACL and then I end up going to Bavard, which is a, which is a, a D2 college, a, a, a great area. Uh, now, as much as I appreciate the mountains now, uh, as far as me and my girl always riding up there, you know, enjoying the scene. I was there at a college that had all the scenery in the world and, and I didn't take advantage of it. Man, yeah. So. It's, yeah, but, it's, that's the story of life, isn't it? When, yeah. when we're there, we just don't, you know, we don't appreciate it. But then as we get older, then, you know, we, mm-hmm. we really look back and like, man, I, I really had some great opportunities. So, uh-huh. so how did you transition from, um, you know, your, your love for the game and, and, and wanting to play ball? How did you transition from that into your, your current career and what you currently do? Uh, great, great question, man. So, uh, so, so my father, uh, me and him, I remember, man, when he worked, uh, he worked and w- what he used to do, he used to cook for uh, um, the people he worked with. So he would take orders and then, you know, go to Sam's Club, get a bunch of meat, all the ingredients and start making sandwiches for his employees in the mornings, you know, when I was young. So I always see him hustle. I always seen him do something. My my, my grandpa was a barber, you know what I'm saying? So he, he had his own thing. So it, it, it was always in me. I sold bootleg DVDs, but the but the, the biggest thing that, that transferred uh, uh, just kind of got me focused on business is really when I tore my ACL, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, for real. Like when, when I tore my ACL and – the attention that I was getting from ball and the, uh, you know, the opportunity that was coming my way because I was healthy, right. it, 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 it all disappeared. Like, you know, I, I know this story sounds so cliche, but you know what I'm saying? That's kind of what woke me up a little bit and, and took the hustle side of, you know, what I used to do as far as, you know, bootleg DVDs, you know, right. things like that. My daddy taught me how to do, I seen him do, you know, I, I started just saying, okay, well, if I can flip candy and flip CDs, why can't I flip properties? <laughs> you know, why can't I, you know, why can't I do this? Like you, you know, so I, I started when I tore my ACL is when I really started focus on business and kind of what am I going to do after basketball? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I really started looking into, looking into, you know, online marketing, things like that, you know, things where I can still live my lifestyle and, and still make money because, because my thing is, man, like, I, I just, for me, a routine of doing the same thing for 30 years, Monday through Friday, and I don't never get the experience of Monday in Hawaii. I don't get the experience of Monday in wherever I want to be, you know, in the mountains, like, like, you know, like, 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 I want to do that stuff spontaneously. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to be able to do things spontaneously. So, so, so business created that for me, that, that, that freedom. So, so yeah, so right when I tore my ACL is is really when I got focused, and I was still in college at the same time too. Right. So I mean, and a lot of people, you know, you say it's cliche. It may sound cliche, but it's the truth. You know, a lot of times it takes something like that unfortunate to happen to get us to get us to really start exploring 
uh, other opportunities. And then sometimes we discover other strengths that we have, other talents that we have that we really didn't realize. Um, mm -hmm. Like for, for me, you know, I was 17 years in retail. I never worked commission sales, nothing like that. But I ended up getting let go from, from, from a job and I, I had to find something to do. So I, I went back, try to go back into retail and I went into a different sort of retail. It was sales and commission sales, but it was in a retail building, HH Gregg. But then, as you know, that company went, eventually went under. Well, I started there the December before HH Gregg filed bankruptcy. So I started at the time when the company was going down and I didn't know this. Mm. So, you know, I was there for a month or two. I went to be a manager trainee because I had the experience as a store manager. That's why I went. Well, they're like, well, we don't have any uh, manager positions right now. It's holiday. We really just need associates. Will you work? And the type of person that I am, yes, I work. I need to provide for my family. I'm not too, too, uh, too proud to say, you know, I'll, I'll work. I'll take whatever. Yeah. So I took the opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. So after the holidays, I followed up. Hey, you know, I came for this reason. When is this going to happen? Well, of course, they were stalling me because it wasn't going to happen. The company was going under. Right. And then one day they came to me and, and wrote me up. They said, because they were going to have to pay me, they were going to have to pay me a draw. Right. And you know what a draw is. So yeah, they didn't get it back. Right. You know, so they were going to have to pay me a draw. So I was like, well, it's not my fault. I sold 30 grand worth of product, you know, but it's out of stock at the warehouse. So let me get this right. You asked me to sell. I sold the stuff. You don't have it in stock but you're writing me up because now you have to pay me an hourly wage. Like that doesn't make sense. That's asinine. And that day on my lunch break, I drove down the street because that morning when I took my daughter to school, there was a, a sign saying they were looking for sales associates at the car lot. Right. So my mind was, well, I've been selling washer and dryers, making $4 selling washer and dryer sets. <laughs> I'm like, surely I'm going to make more than that selling a car. And I was like, I've owned but man, I'm telling you, the car business is the come up, man. If that that's the legal come up, I don't care what nobody tells me. Car business, man. man. I I started there. Look, that that is that is the legal come up, man. Quick look, come up. I had man. no, I had no idea what I was <laughs> in for. So I go in there, and um, so I'm like, yeah, I can make more than four dollars selling a car. I know that. I bought a car. I drive cars. And now I know how to talk to people because I've been working in, in a sales environment, commission sales. Mm -hmm. So I had developed a confidence with being able to approach people and talk to them, assess their needs, make them feel comfortable. So I learned that while at HH Gregg. That wasn't mm -hmm. a skill that I had before that because I didn't need it. I didn't need mm -hmm. to use it. I had developed it. So I said, I can take that and apply it and sell a car. Mm -hmm. That was my thought. So I go in and you know how it is in the car business. If you have a pulse, they're going to give you a chance. Yep. <laughs> so I thought I was doing something. I called my wife. I was like, baby, guess what? They're they going to hire me at the car dealership. Good. Yeah, I'm in there. <laughs> so, so I get in there, man. And, you know, it's, it's a smooth transition because, you know, I'm a people person. At the end of the day, I somehow got it in my mind that all I need to do is treat people well and everything else will take care of itself rather than being focused on, oh, I have to sell, I have to sell, I have to mm -hmm. sell. Just no. focus on their needs, man. Yeah. That's it. They're there for a reason. They, mm -hmm. they come there because they're looking for a car. So it's no secret why they're there. My job then is to uncover further or understand more specifically what they need and provide a solution, right? So yeah. I learned how to do that. And not before long, you know, I was one of the top producers at that dealership. So I was like, hey, this is pretty cool, man. When I made my first check, let me think I made like $1,200 on one car or something. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, huh? Okay. I like this. I can do this. But you know as well as I do, every deal is not like that. You know? Nah, you know, hey, yeah, every deal is not like that. But, you know, you. so I got used to it. After a while, I outgrew that dealership because it was a smaller dealership, less volume. And I decided to go to a bigger dealership. And that's where I've been now. But yep. if I had not had the adversity of getting terminated from my previous job, mm -hmm. I never would have uh, learned the skill of selling 
And I don't even want to say the skill of selling because I don't, I don't consider it selling. Look, I'm just helping people. I never would have developed that. that sales and persuasion and influence has such a negative connotation, man. Like people that's never in it, they don't, they don't understand it, man. You, 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 you're really piecing together and facilitating it. Like, you know what I'm saying? All the way through, through, you know, effective questioning, man. Like you got to look at it. Man, you got to look at it from, from, from that standpoint uh, in, in, in order to really, uh, you know, push it through smoothly, man. So you can just, you know, close. And that's, and that's all it is. You said it perfectly. I'm just facilitating this process. That's all mm -hmm. I'm doing. So had I not been terminated, I never would have been put in a position to where I now had to develop that skill. Then once I developed it, then I gained the confidence that I can continue to do it and was able to move on. But just like you, you know, it took the knee injury for something to click to you like, hey, I need to develop some, something else mm -hmm. so that I can be able to experience the lifestyle that I want to experience. And yep. it's, a common, it's a common, common thread when you look at and study people who have achieved success in their life is that there has to be some adversity. That there's something is going to come along that is going to trip and you have to find a solution to that. And then that triggers this process of self-improvement, mm -hmm. process of learning, getting better, and then subsequently setting goals and achieving those goals. Yep. Right? So I can, I can definitely understand that. So now you, right now you're in uh, primary, you're real estate, correct? Is that, that's, yep. that's, that's, that's your career. That's what you do. And real that's, estate the, investing. that's the vehicle you use to help provide for your family and get the freedom that you want. Yes, sir. Yeah. So how, how did you get to the level of success that, that you have achieved? Um, and, you know, we haven't talked a whole lot about what that success is, but the reason I have you on is because you have achieved a measure of success with mm -hmm. your field. So how did you get to this level of success? Uh, really, to be honest with you, man, processes and systems uh, that, you know, if you, if, if you're really looking at a business, man, like you don't really, really, I don't, I don't want to be in it all day long. Um, you know, uh, uh, creating these processes and systems that, um, that me and my business partners do really, really took it off. Uh, because you go from a, uh, a hustler, self-employed, high paying hustler, to putting in processes and systems, you become a business owner and then you start leveraging those systems with other people's time. You know what I mean? So, so really putting together systems is what took it from, you know, a few deals to, to, you know, four to six deals a month. you like, you know what I'm saying for us, you know, uh, for, for, for the direction we're moving. So really processes and systems, uh, you know, and, and really, uh, um, understanding people under uh, understanding the people that you hire too, understanding the, the people that you're dealing with and your clientele more. Yeah. So yes, that's the, that's the two things. Yeah. Sys processes, systems, procedures, um, you know, for, for, for our listeners, I hope you guys are taking notes because these are absolute keys to success. I know of no one, there is no one, anybody that has ever achieved anything without a process and a procedure in place. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you said the third thing, you know, Marcus Lemonis, he says the process, the people and the product, right? Mm -hmm. But the people, it is so important that you have the right people performing those processes and procedures. You gotta have them in the right place. And, and, and you're going to make mistakes doing it. Like, you know, that, that, that's, that's really the, you know, the, the way to learn it and, and to figure it out, man. I just, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, thankful that I got, you know, the, the business partners that I have and we're able to, you know, figure out these holes and figure out these gaps and just, you know, innovate as we go, man. So that's, uh, you know, man, that's the beauty of it, the, you know, en enjoying that process, you know, uh, growing it, uh, seeing where the hose is, I always have to innovate it. And, and then just like you said, just, just studying your understanding, you have to understand your, your, your clientele, your buyers and your sellers, man. Like you have to understand them, have to. Uh, you know, um, the, it, I think about that because in my industry, um, like I told you, you know, if you got a pulse, they'll, they'll put you in there. Mm -hmm. but what I think a lot of leaders in my industry, don't realize is that if you don't have 
a, a strong process in place, it doesn't matter who you put in there. They, 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 it's it's going to fall apart. So yeah, you've matter. got to have a tight process. And then you can take someone and put them in there. But then, you know, we forget. You, you can't just take them and put them in there. You have to do what? You have to train them. But, man, listen, you have to train them. If they're sorry employees, it's because your training is sorry. Yeah. It is a reflection of you. I had to learn that the hard way, and you are 100% right, man. So the, the you know, mind mapping, putting things on paper, uh, and really getting them, getting them ideas out of your head on paper, that really builds the structure because, like, I know you can go through the whole car process right now with me, step one, one to ten. But if you can't teach that, if you can't make that duplicatable, that process don't mean nothing, nothing. Nothing at all, man. So you, you, I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's something that shouldn't be lost is that, you know, you've got the process, then you have the people, but don't forget, you have to train the people to execute that process. Right? Yeah. So is, so, um, an, another key and, and something else that, um, I think you and I both understand that when it comes to achieving success, it's important that you have some sort of, routine some some sort of i call it a uh, a, a daily success routine right yes, uh, sir. something that you do some things that you do uh, on a daily basis you do them consistently that in the end will yield the results that you're looking for um and this is something also that takes trial and error right you've got to figure yeah. out what works for you what works for one you know what works for one may not work for another but exactly. individual um, we, it's essential that if we want to achieve any amount of success in our lives, we must develop some sort of a routine. And mm -hmm. I tell people, sometimes folks will want to tell me, oh, I don't have one. I said, the fact you just told me you don't have a routine tells me you have a routine. We all have a routine. It's just a matter of what it is and how productive it is. Yep. So for some people, their daily routine is just unproductive. So they don't get the results they're looking for. So yep. what does your daily success routine look like? Uh, outside of business, uh, every morning, man, I have to get up and meditate. Uh, for me, uh, that just puts, uh, puts my routine on track uh, for me. Uh, meditation in the morning, uh, 30 minutes, you know, just, you know, just, just focus and slowing down your thoughts, focusing on, you know, your goals. Uh, the, the second thing, the biggest thing we do, and in our business, we have a nine o'clock meeting every single morning an hour about the leads that came in and then what's the next step with those leads and then setting the agenda, setting the tone for the rest of the day. Uh, so th those two things are very big and we are routine on that uh, uh, to, to the T. Like uh, that's employees have to be there. All notes have to be prepared. Uh, all the data that came in last night has to be prepared so we can go over it. So uh, that the meditation that our nine o'clock meetings and then um, I would say going over our process uh, is very cons consistent. Now, you don't have to do that every day. Uh, your process, you know, figuring that out, it can be like you go over that every every three days. Like whenever you, you know, figure out um, a lead went untouched. Okay. All right, man. So now let's spend 20 minutes in the process to figure out why this lead went untouched and figure out how to patch this as we go. So. Yeah. So yeah, those, those two, for me, it's, for me, it's simple. The more simple it is, the more productive I, I got done. And that's what you said. I, I had to figure out what was best for me. I used to have four or five things, get up, meditate, read my affirmations. You know what I'm saying? R read this book, uh, do this. Where for me, the less that I've done, the more simple it is, the more productive I am as a person. And, uh, the, and, and reading is, is something that I do on a regular basis, but that's more, you know, spontaneous for me. Like I didn't, uh, I didn't like to read coming up a lot. I didn't read my first book till I was, uh, you know, 24. I just got a thirst for knowledge when I hit 24. Don't know why I can't tell you. I just wanted to read, but, uh, but for that, more reading for me is on a routine, but it needs to be spontaneous because if it's on a routine for me, like I don't, I don't enjoy it. You know what I mean? I got to do it when I want to. So yeah. simple it is, it's better for me. Yeah. The, the reading thing is something that, and you know, for, for my listeners, they, they've heard me say this time and time again, reading for me is, is something that's challenging as well. 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a slow reader. I've, I've never read one book from cover to cover, right? And it's, it's very challenging. I'll lose interest. So um, again, I had to find a solution. If I want to be successful, I need to read because guess what? The knowledge is in the books, right? The, mm-hmm. the answers are in the books. So instead, um, I, I use audiobooks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I'll listen to books. And they started before before I got into my current industry uh, in the last place where they let me go. And they told me I wasn't developing, right? It's funny because this whole thing kind of started there, but I wasn't right. developing. But anyway, there's, there's a whole other story behind that. <laughs> uh, I wasn't doing the type of developing that, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what I did was we'd have to be at work at six o'clock in the morning to get the truck unloaded. The store opened at nine. So I'd have a three hour block every day that I went to work. I started listening to audiobooks the entire time. I'd come in with my headphones on. So for three hours every day, as I unload unloading the truck, mm-hmm. like they probably were thinking I was listening to music. I wasn't listening to music. I was listening to Robert Kiyosaki. I was listening to Grant Cardone. I was, <laughs> I was listening, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was listening to, to the greats. Um, and it, it was amazing to me how listening to that totally changed not just my attitude, but it changed my outlook on life. Like mm-hmm. it, it changed my, my belief that I could really do whatever it was that, that I wanted. And mm-hmm. that was key because had I not started that process of self-development, of listening to those books, if I allowed the fact that I was a slow reader to hinder me, I would not be where I am now. I yep. wouldn't have authored a book. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have a podcast. Um, I, I wouldn't, you know, have s- several websites that, that I've built for, for customers and for myself. I wouldn't be succeeding in the car business if I had allowed that to happen. So, you know, it's very important that, you know, we have a daily success routine and it doesn't, like you said, yours may not include reading, right? Mm-hmm. And mine doesn't include reading. It includes listening to books. But it's very important you get that information some yep. way, somehow. If yep. it's YouTube, because a lot of titles now are on YouTube, um, mm-hmm. there's this thing that I got. It's called Mentor Box. Um, I saw it on Facebook where you, it's an, uh, the author takes their book and they give you a synopsis of their book in a video form. Yep. Um, and that's pretty cool. So I've got that. I've started using that. But like you said, that thirst for knowledge, man, you've got to look, you got to thirst for it and then find a way that you can consume it that works for you. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, man, I, I, I use audio. Uh, I use that too. And actually, uh, with me being dyslexic, uh, it actually, I read and I follow it too. So uh, actually over time, uh, and I speed it up a little bit when I used to do it, when I read, yeah. actually over time, I started being able to read at that same amount of speed without listening to the audio book, like not being able to do it. So mm-hmm. yeah, how, how, man, however you got to do it. My, my thing is, I just let, those are my two things I like to do routine. So it frees me up after I'm done at the office, whatever we're doing. And then at the end of the day, I love watching documentaries, man. And, and I, I want that freedom to be spontaneous, like in order for me to, you know, just just get a hunch for me to go pick up this book today. You know what I'm saying? Get the audio book, finish the book in three days, read the book out. It doesn't hinder me. And it's and if and for me it's 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 a hobby to me. I just I like that freedom after those two routines and that routine set, I get my stuff done in the morning. Yeah. And the rest of the day is more for me to be spontaneous, to, to learn, to, to pick up a book. You know, if I want to sit down and watch a documentary on my TV, I can. If I want to indulge myself and my son playing basketball outside or or, 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 or me and, uh, you know, my girl and our family will, will, will go walk on trails like like, you know, I can I can I can do that when I want. So yeah. so as long as those two things are done for me, I'm fine with how everything plays out throughout the day for me. You know what right. I mean? And, and, and that's, a, that's a, another key is, you know, having those priorities, ha- having those things, those must do's. And then once, you, once you're done with that, being okay with, with the results. And I think ultimately, just in terms of um, one of the things I say is, and I say this to my son, I'm okay with the results as long as you give the effort. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it's kind of like that. You know, you put in the effort, you've got your routine, you've got, you do this, you do this, and then whatever else happens after that, you're okay with it. And the same thing when it comes to, in general, when it comes to just getting things done or, or, or reaching goals is mm -hmm. you make the plan, you put in the effort, and then you have to be, then be okay with the results. Because if you're not, then sometimes you beat yourself up because, you know, success is not always all winning. You're going to have failures yeah. along the way, right? Yeah. You have to be okay with those failures and, and learn from those failures and use them to propel yourself forward. Yeah. Be honest about them. I agree. Yeah. Now, if, if you could go back in time um, to, to, to your younger self, what advice would you, would you give to your, to your younger self if you could go back in time? Hmm. If I could go back in time, what would I tell myself? Probably to to understand uh, to understand your emotions. Like I was very like I wore my heart on my sleeve uh, when I played ball. I was passionate about it, but you know I didn't know how to tame it. So so you know I I I didn't understand that that emotion for me that that anger and that drive for me i could have you know just turned it around and used that energy to put back in the ball to an extra workout but you know just you know having that having that type of understanding uh, at a at, at a at a younger age I, I would i would say that but change anything any decisions i made nah i wouldn't i would I, I, that, that was part of who i am today you know what i mean yeah Definitely. I definitely understand that. Mm. What, what would you say has been the biggest challenge to you um, getting to where you are now, to where you have that freedom? What, what would you say is maybe one thing that, you know, you kind of had to overcome in order to, to get to the place where you are now and enjoy the freedom, freedoms that you have? Mm. What was my biggest challenge? That's a good question, man. Cause you know, um, there, there, there's a lot of things, but I would say probably my, my biggest challenge was overcoming a uh, certain perception of things. Um, uh, overcoming like, um, I would say overcoming uh, my perspective of uh, individuals as far as when they've done something to me, like, you're, like, you know what I mean? I would, uh, I, I, I would hold some resentment, like you, you know, and then yeah. and then that would be my perspective of them, you know, for for a long time, and yeah. and, and 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 it and it burnt bridges uh, coming up, you know, growing up and stuff. So, yeah, I, that that was one of the biggest things. And then once I understand that, you know, those are just, you know, those are just, you know, those th those actions doesn't doesn't make that person. Like you feel what I'm exactly. saying? It just. It's just it's it's you know they're who they are at the time because if that was the case you know everybody would hate me when whenever I you know was wild back in my day so you know under uh you know understanding how to let go and just you know just observe yeah definitely um what what would you say has been your greatest accomplishment the greatest accomplishment I would say uh team building team building uh uh, being able to, uh, being able to team build and, and, and with that, you got to be able to teach, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you have to be able to, uh, to communicate, uh, team building was, uh, you, you know, the reason why we're, where we're at with our business, you know, with these processes and systems in place in order for us to grow. So I, I would say that, that, that would be the, the, the biggest thing, team building. And, and of course it, it translates or, it, and something like that translates beyond just, the. Uh, the business atmosphere because that would be a, a general life skill is understanding uh, or having the ability to team build because mm -hmm. no, no one does anything on their own right no one accomplishes anything on their own. and it's important that you know you're you're able to to galvanize people to to reach towards a common goal so i would mm -hmm. say that um that's a a great accomplishment and something to be to be proud of um what would you say you um, enjoy most about your success? Really, man, it's really, I would say 
the, the, the process. And I know that's broad, but more the, 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 the biggest thing about like building, building process, but being enjoying the process is, is you focused on like what's going on now. And, 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 and when you, when you get in that zone, like, you know, as an athlete, you know, I mean, you know, like, like, like when you're in the zone, like when I play ball or something and I get hot playing, uh, like I, I don't hear nothing. I'm just in a zone. And if, and, and, and if you can enjoy like those, those processes within those, uh, those moments when you're building a business and stuff, you know, I mean, you can sit back and reflect and, and then figure out how, how to, uh, you know, innovate things, man. You know, I, I, I sit back and, and think about things like that all the time because I, I, I just tried to, to stay in the moment, man, because, you know, man, I, I used to get caught up in my thoughts all the time, man. And, and what it would do is it get me distracted, man. I, could, yeah. I couldn't focus worth two cents when I was little, man. So it's just, you know, focusing on the now, it, 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 it just bringing that focus together is, 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 is kind of like the, the biggest joy for me because I can, I can take that and apply that anywhere to, to my land business, to me coaching AAU next year with other kids, to 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 you know being a father to my son you know what i mean things like that so that that one thing translates you know across life for me and and, and i just kind of try to use that principle with business most most of all yeah so one of one of the things i i always like to to have our guests talk about is is their journey in their process um through this and and how it's helped them to become the the best version of themselves mm-hmm. I truly believe that uh, as individuals, as people, as we set goals, as we make plans and we uh, reach milestones and get things done, you, you're not the same. You, you, you are not the same when you reach your goal as you were when you started. Mm-hmm. And, and what I have found is that it's such a it's such a beautiful process. It's such a beautiful journey. If you can take a moment and reflect. Yes. Reflect yes. upon where you were. That's, that's the beauty where, of it. You know, and where you are. Yes. So how has your success helped you to become the best version of yourself? Uh, man, it, it, it helps me be able to teach it. It, 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 it uh, you know, it, it, the, the, the biggest thing for me, like I, I had a college friend uh, reach out to me. His name's Moose. Uh, shout out to my buddy Moose. Uh, he, uh, we was in college together. He seen what I was doing, reached out to me. And the fact that he was taking action, seeing what I was doing, like, you know what I mean? This, this man's doing deals now, you know, virtually in other states. So, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the biggest thing for me is just, you know, man, help after, after, you know, I'm, I don't, I don't hold people's hand doing nothing. Like it's, it's the fact that you take action to do it. And the fact that, you know, when you go through that, if somebody's taking action, it's easy to give them nuggets and to give them clues to help them along the way. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, it's, it's just like, you know, raising my kid too. you know, dropping him little nuggets and he puts it together. And then I'm like, ah, boy, there you go. You starting to get it. So those, those things going through that process, reflecting on that, and then learning how to, you know, try to share, uh, you know, a few of those things, even if it's just, you know, a course to help somebody else learn something, how to make money, you know, just, just, you know, being able to share things, being able to teach it back. Yeah. You know, there's, there's something to be said for being, being able to be in a position to where you can do that, to where you can help someone. Um, Mm -hmm. and, I mean, as I'm growing and as I'm getting older, I think there's nothing that brings me more joy than helping someone. And yeah. someone, someone said to me, well, you know, don't get so caught up in helping people um, or doing, and it's not about like doing something for someone. It's yeah. about empowering them. That, yes, that's yeah. where the joy yeah. comes. Doing something for somebody is is you know that's that's I would do something for my mama like you like you know what I mean yeah. like yeah. if I continue to doing stuff for you all the time now nah, at, at that point you're you you're starting to play that victim but when I'm able to give you little nuggets and you're able to level up yourself I'm inspiring yeah. you 
Like, you know what I mean? Right. And, and, and then, you know, I, I respect anybody that, that, that takes it that way. Like, you know what I mean? And that's, and, and, and yes, you, you, yeah. you're hundred percent right, brother. Yeah. And that's, and, and, you know, and that's where, you know, I feel the, like, for, again, for this platform, like, that's what I envision. You know, I envision that someday somebody's going to come across this, this podcast on, on Spotify and they, the title might catch their attention and they'll listen. And I envision one day that they're going to hear something that you said that's going to click with them, right? And then it's going to cause them to go and seek out more information. And then mm -hmm. that's where that process starts. And yeah. there's nothing, I mean, and I think that's the, the great teachers, like the teachers that we remember when we were young, like they're great teachers. I believe that's what drives them. Because it's definitely it's not the money. Nah, can't because be. It, it's what drives them is yes. when they see, when they pour into us and then they see us kind of return it back. Like you said, that aha moment, we get it. Then yep. we start executing and we start doing. So now I understand why those great teachers are great teachers and why they yep. love it. Because there's nothing like in, you know, inspiring someone and empowering someone so that they can then go from where they are and lift themselves up to a whole different level. Mm -hmm. so, Much agree. Yeah. So, man, I, I, I appreciate your time. Um, do me, do me a favor, please. Tell us um, and, and the listeners um, a little bit more about what it is that, that you do. Okay. So man, I, man, we, uh, I'm, I'm a real estate entrepreneur. Uh, I, uh, I specialize in finding discount properties and, uh, like I say, create win-win situation for sellers. And also, um, we do, um, you know, hold, holding, we, 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 we hold property stuff like that too. But the, the easiest way to contact me, man, I'm, I'm really an under the rock type guy, as you know, I only got a Facebook, uh, <laughs> and I'm, and, 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 and I'm hardly not on it as much. So, right. you know, yeah. Gotcha. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I include um, contact information for anyone sure. that, that perhaps may be interested in what it is that you do. Maybe want to sure. learn a little bit more or maybe can take advantage of, of, of the services that you provide someone who may be in a situation where you, you could help them out. But yep. uh, Gaither, man, I, I thank you so much for, for being so generous with your time and, and coming on. Um, it, it really means a lot to me because um, you know, as far as you and I know, we we saw each other a couple of times on the basketball court. We we yep. competed hard against each other, but I'm telling you, it was the conversation that we had on the side. Yeah, wasn't even on the court. It was a conversation that we had on the side, and mm -hmm. I was like, you know what this this brother is 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 about it, and 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 I love it, man. And it's it's just amazing. You have no idea the greatness that's around you every day that you step out. You you just you just don't know. You know, and, and and it's important that as human beings and individuals that we take a we take time sometimes in a moment to greet someone and, and speak to them because you may find out like I did, you know, I've I've got a, a gem of a resource right here. You know, this this guy that I'm trying to get him locked up, I'm not gonna let him get his jumper off. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm trying not to let him get that jumper off. You know, come to find out, man. Like you, you're a, a whole different type of a, a resource. So again, I, I greatly appreciate your time and generosity with coming on. Appreciate you, man. The knowledge, so. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our podcast. Make sure to connect with us on all of our platforms. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You can also listen to the podcast on anchor.fm. Best of all, make sure to check out the website at AchieveSuccessPodcast.com.